Howdy partners, it's Tuesday and you know what that means, it's time to drink two beers. My beer drinking friends and welcome to another Two Brew Tuesday. I'm your host Andy and uh, before we get into things I just wanted to go over a couple housekeeping things that I usually do at the end of the episode but uh, throwing it in here at the beginning. Uh, please make sure if you like any of our videos please give us a big old thumbs up. It really does help us and also you know so you don't miss out on any of our other content please make sure you clip, click on the subscribe button. Uh, don't forget we do also post on Facebook and Instagram a lot so there's also some great content there. But uh, without further ado then, let's just jump right into this episode. Um, if you are a subscriber, you may have uh, remembered that we were recently at the Buckles and Brews Invitational, this beer festival uh, located out in Santa Barbara. Uh, we did a lot of great interviews with uh, some of the local breweries who were out there, including uh, Telegraph. So we got a couple of uh, beers actually. We were talking to the rep there and they actually sent us home with uh, this amazing beer right here. It's the uh, Reserve Wheat Ale. Um, Telegraph is in downtown uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, they've been brewing since about 2006. Uh, they made a lot of news last year because they were actually acquired by Epic. Um, and part of that deal actually was uh, Epic was looking to, to get some extra um, production and so they're actually also making some epic beers over at Telegraph in Santa Barbara. But um, this beer has actually been around for a while. It's probably one of Telegraph's better known beers. Uh, again, it's the Reserve Wheat Ale, which is actually basically a Berliner Weiss. So it's uh, lightly soured. Um, you know, most Berliner Weisses are about 50% wheat. Let's see if I can get this cork out. Uh, this beer has won a number of awards. Uh, I know most recently in 2014 it got a gold at the uh, GABF, Great American Beer Festival. Oh wow, I'm even, I'm already getting that awesome like light tart aroma just from popping that cork, so I'm really excited to try this beer. All right, so let's pour this guy in a glass and see what we're dealing with. So this is a uh, bottle conditioned beer, but it actually does pour, I mean, it's got a little bit of that wheat haze you'll see, but I mean, it is a beautiful clear beer. And it had a light, small white head, but a lot of sour beers, they don't have much head retention because of the acidity. Um, the head kind of just totally just dissipated. Uh, you can tell though that there is a lot of carbonation in this beer. There's a ton of bubbles I see rising up to the surface. Mm. So this has, has a really nice uh, mellow lactic sourness to it. So it's a very clean sour. There's not like a lot of funk. I'm getting just like a hint of, you know, sort of a crackery Pilsner-like malt character. And then also, you know, a very strong wheat aroma as well. No, no real hop aroma. So I, th I think I should just dive in and taste this thing. Mm. Wow, that is really nice. This is, you know, totally on a hot summer day. And I can tell you in Southern California, we're already getting some of that summer, you know, 90 degree plus weather. So this is actually really hitting the spot right now because I was thirsty. Mm. Yeah, this would be a great barbecue beer, a great mowing the lawn beer, a great sitting by the pool beer. Um, yeah, I can't even think of a situation where I wouldn't want to have this beer. Again, it has like a firm acidity, but it's not, um, a lot of times with, with some American sour beers, uh, the acidic punch is so strong that you feel like, well, maybe I could have eight ounces of this. Honestly, I could totally toss this whole bottle back. It would not be a problem at all. It's, it's very smooth, um, nice balance. So yeah, I've got no complaints there. Wow. So yeah, so um, the, the rep at Telegraph uh, ended up sending me home with this bottle. And uh, when I got home, I noticed, hey, I had another Telegraph bottle already sitting in my beer cellar. What do you know? So yeah, this is uh, Obscura Magnifique. Um, this is aged in red wine barrels for 24 months. 
And then they add a pound of raspberries and cherries per gallon. That is a lot of fruit. Uh, so if you think if it was in a 55 gallon barrel, they're putting 55 pounds of fruit in there as well. Um, let's open this one up and see what it looks like as well. Cork and Cage always makes for good YouTube viewing, I assume. Watch me struggle as I open this up and deal with all the carbonation in that last beer. I'm woohoo. Come on, let's see if I can make it fly. Oh, come on. Come on. All right, that was kind of a dud. All right, so let's pour it in a glass. Again, seeing a ton of carbonation in this beer. Um, it's got that nice, you know, just like amberish color but then there's like all these little like pink and red like highlights it almost looks like a rosé to me um yeah that's really pretty again with the acidity it doesn't really have much head retention um you know this one clocked in at only uh, i think four and a half percent and the obscure magnifique is gonna be 5.6 percent so both of these are actually pretty sessionable beers Oh wow. So I'm getting a ton of raspberry up front. I mean, it's the, the raspberry is really strong. And then there's kind of sort of a background note of that darker cherry fruit. Um, not a lot of malt in this one. I think the fruit flavors are really dominant. It does again have sort of that little bit of an acidic note to the, uh, to the aroma. Mmm. All right, if you have friends that say they don't like beer, this is a beer you could totally introduce them to because it's got a lot of those sort of, you know, I would say rosé wine characters to it. You know, not only does it have sort of that, that pinkish reddish color to it and a lot of carbonation, but it's got sort of a mellow acidity that kind of reminds me a lot of wine. And then it's also got a lot of those fruit flavors as well. So. This one is also really nicely balanced. The acidity is not over the top. I feel like a lot of times, you know, new American sour brewers, they're all competing to see who can make, you know, the sourest, you know, make your mouth pucker kind of a beer. Uh, this is not that kind of a beer. Uh, this is much more balanced, uh, nuanced. There's even just like a little bit of funk on this one. Um, if I was gonna compare this with something, I would totally go with like a cheese plate. Uh, I could see it going well with the soft cheeses as well as, you know, something like a blue cheese or even like a, a really hard like Parmesan, something that's gonna like pack a lot of flavor. The acidity in this with the fruit is really gonna help you clean the palate so that you're ready for, you know, to switch to a different kind of cheese. Um, Again, it's also only 5.6% ABV, so it's it's really easy to drink. Um, gosh, you know, those guys in Telegraph, they've been brewing for about 12 years. I think they know what they're doing. <laughs> so yeah, those are our two beers for Two Brew Tuesday. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And another reminder, just make sure if you can give us a thumbs up, it really does help us out a lot. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday. Cheers. Cheers.